Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated to a new compact brush dresser. This is a new brand, the Happy model brand, and I guess it's another subdivision uh, of for uh, and uh, some stuff like this. Uh, you will see uh, why I'm telling that. Anyway, this is a Mantis 85, and this is probably one of the cheapest brushless quad capture in 85 millimeters, and we have. Uh, also a lot of new technologies, for example, we have an F4 uh, plus a built-in Betaflight OSD, that's great. We have a classic 48 channel uh, 25 milliwatts uh, with um, a 600 uh, TVL CMOS camera. Uh, what we have, super light, well for an 85 mm it's really not so bad. Uh, in terms of motor we have something a little bit different, instead to find typically some 1104, we have only some 1102 so smaller but lighter so uh, I hope and we will see that there will be uh, a good impact in for the uh, total weight so uh, I've got the RTF version it comes with this uh, fly sky in uh, FHDS2 air protocol the classic FSI6 but you can find it also in pure uh, BNF with uh, either uh, Fear Skies in G8 but with the RSS side on the latch channel and the classic Spectrum DSM2 DSMX. So let's now focus and have a look to this new uh, package. Okay, here is the contents of all the uh, elements. First of all, I will start with the accessories. We have a small 2S LiPo ending with a GST connector. It's a 400 milliamps per hour LiPo and the discharge rate it's announced to be 30c is more or less the same time of uh, uh, battery we can find in some chain model okay so uh, especially for the aurora for example so i think it's just a sticky replacement the weight is about 23.7 okay and uh, let's if you are interested by let's give the uh, total dimension so it's about uh, 42 okay bye something about uh, 20 by also uh, 16 okay <clears throat> so no problem to find some compatible 40 c as discharge rate is not so bad if it's true okay uh we can find two of velcro 3m velcro band to uh, completely secure the battery installation we will see i think uh it will be the main uh, battery attachment system uh small bags with some uh, four um uh, spare props so uh, they are officially some two inch let's check that in the instruction um, blah, blah 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 it's um not exactly two inch it's an, uh 1.9 inch okay and if you want some exact uh dimension the half of them are something about uh let's say 23 so multiply by 2 so it's 46 um, <coughs> centimeters so a little bit less than 15 so a little bit less than uh, 2 inch props we can find two small rubber band and four oh maybe more uh, seems to be more blah 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 about six spare uh, uh, M2X screws for the uh, prop system. Uh, as already show we have the instruction manual printed in color and you don't like it's very similar to some Oachin uh, uh, instruction manual okay for example the Aurora 90 100 etc so it's pretty in color same time of the way of the uh, 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 the way to present everything but it's a new company AP model so probably Oachin is behind or Banggood indirectly or there is no M company somewhere so we have officially an 85 mm we will check that fact 49 grams without battery probably more with the battery strap pre-installed a super f4 it's an omnibus model with built-in osd some um <coughs> 1102 motor spinning at 9000 uh, kV okay so uh it should support only 2s unfortunately uh some 1.9 inch props with 35 uh, for the pin channel the classic camera io it's a 4 8 gigahertz 48 channel let's say 600 tvl with 120 the field of view so it's not a, it's a classic uh, uh, you know another uh, sign that is probably on Ashin is the classic module used uh, for as for many Ashin model it comes with uh, sorry betafly 3.2 it's not the ultimate one but at least it's a 2.3.2 branch at least we have a built-in bother and the flight time is expected to be around four minutes so probably less three minutes something 
So we have the all the instruction manual for the uh, element and especially the list of the uh, six supported uh, V band. Okay, RSA band is obviously supported, and the H channel associated with the H frequency. And as usual, uh, to with such kind of model, we have two uh, buttons. I hope, yes, hope you will be able to see here. Okay, the rear one and the front one. The rear one is to select. If you shot one on it, uh, the current frequency inside the current selected bed, typically one of these eight frequency inside this uh, selected column, and if you long press on it, uh, you will have a blue uh, light shifting to the uh, right, and you will uh, cycle between the uh, six frequency. Okay, so uh, you can find your match your uh, column rows very easily by long and short pressing. Uh, the front <coughs> button, sorry, is to uh, select between PEL and NNTC. If you long press on it, if you short press on it, you will mirror flip the image. Okay. Uh, it's not very useful, but anyway, it's uh, one of the functions of this kind of I.O. module. Good news, look that, the camera support and is orientable. So something about, I would say, mm, 15 degrees positive angle up to, if we can very push to the limit, something about 40 degrees, some stuff like this. So you can fly very aggressively with this one. So let's now discover the uh, machine. Good point. We have an orientable, orientation lens uh, camera uh, mount uh, possibility. Uh, the 5.8 GHz antenna, all the button selection button are very easy to access. And we have this uh, 11402 uh, motor spinning at 9000 kV. Okay, and there is a, is there a possibility to install more larger? Mm -hmm, maybe some two inch is not completely sure if we will not touch the aluminum standoff. So let's give an information about the weight. Okay, stand alone without, uh, but there is a pre-installed battery strap. Okay, very thin, so not super ideal in my point of view, but we will check that fact. So let's give the information. We have oh, far for two from the 49 <laughs> gram XP anons without battery, uh, close to six gram more heavier. <laughs> so I guess it was uh, without the receiver installed be rear. And if we had uh, the um, battery, we reach um, seven, close to 80 grams. So um, approximately close to um, uh, 15 gram more lighter than, uh, for example, an Aurora 100, some stuff like this. Well, 10 gram at least. So let's check <coughs> behind, sorry. I got a cold not so long ago and, uh, and still have some remaining uh, effect. So we have for the RTI version, the FlySky receiver. And in fact, for even for the BNF, all the receiver will be installed on the rear side where you can find a bind button here. It's connected via a micro GST connector. Uh, connector uh, with uh, three wires, so uh, here it's with iBus connection. So we will check the face here, obviously, but I can say it's working, so that's great. But we will, I will demonstrate that fact. So uh, it's super uh, easy to access, no problem to access to the USB port. Soldering job are correct, well, not super, maybe fantastic. You know, I always advise with such open system to have some liquid electrical tape to secure to make the system waterproof. Okay, especially if you are flying over some wet grass, you can save your machine. So spread here and you will uh, avoid some shorts. Okay. Anyway, so uh, nothing else. And the butter is here and silent stop. Great position, no problem. Can we install the battery? On top, probably yes, but I'm afraid that they will enter into contact with the uh, props. Okay, yes, probably yes. So uh, the uh, official position of the battery is uh, below, and you will see that. Wow, it's not it's not super easy to tight pretty well the the uh, battery strap. So um, it's not an, an ideal situation, and more is so thin that at the takeoff. You won't be uh, horizontal, it will fall in one direction, as a forward, as a backward, leftward or rightward. Is up because it's too thin, the battery strap, so it's probably uh, a problem and more. You can see that it's still uh, slipping here on the background, so uh, definitely a not super good situation. Um, what I can say, so uh, let's check now uh, how is working the um, face safe behavior. So I will keep the props installed, but uh, in general, I have to do it without props, but anyway, since I already done, but I want just to show you that I will connect the battery, okay, and we have 
the uh, radio pre-install pre-bound so let's as i said look that it's falling on the left okay and uh, as you can see uh, it's already pre-bound and i will harm the machine so is the uh, switch uh, b okay and let's turn off the uh, radio one and stopping immediately beeping great let's turn on and it's a rebinding automatically and i can rearm no problem so uh, the face of behavior is working well because you have to know that some uh, FlySky H2 Ace prot uh, receiver, for some of them, the face safe is not working. Here we have a firmware efficient at least to offer uh, working face safe. That's a great point. Uh, maybe we can regret the position of the GST connector as well, the uh, uh, 5.8 gigahertz antenna. Probably uh, we can meet. Uh, we can have some direct contact with the props so it should be optimized or maybe bend downward uh, and more vertically it should help in fact in practice the uh, radio frequency propagation and we have to be sure that the uh, gst connector is pre-banned like this so um <coughs> sorry actually uh, uh for the price is surprising well designed um let's check the uh, thickness of the uh, carbon for the lower and main uh, uh, element, we have a two millimeters, uh, okay, two millimeters frame, and for the upper, is thinner. It should turn about one millimeters. Yes, and let's check if it's a true um, uh, three key carbon and not fiberglasses. Okay, so if it's a real carbon, it should conduct electricity, and if it's fiberglasses, is not. So let's do the test. Uh, okay. Yes, you can hear this buzzing. So we have real three key carbon. Okay, so good news <laughs> for durability. Two millimeters, well, for 80 gram, it's okay. Maybe we would prefer three uh, um, millimeters, but it will impact the total weight as well. So it could be a, a nice trade-off. We don't have any prop cards, okay. So um, the prop sounds more <coughs> or less solid. We'll see if, in the other hand, they won't offer any jellos and some stuff like this. So, it's time to check the beta flight configuration, okay? And uh, the default one, probably optimize a bit. You have to know that the camera comes with NTSC uh, configuration uh, by default, and I prefer to fly in a Pell. Anyway, uh, let's check the default beta flight 3.2 configuration. Probably maybe uh, upgrade to the last table version and go in the field. Okay, so uh, let's plug to uh, the Betaflight fly configurator door 3.2.2. So uh, if you have the uh, uh, driver correctly installed, no problem for connection. First of all, let's dump immediately uh, the current default settings. So you have to type in the CLI the dump command. Okay, press enter, and then you will have to copy all the information give gave in the uh, dump. Windows and then I strongly advise to save all these uh, settings into uh, an empty text file save and if you will need to restore your default setting just copy from this text file paste here in the cell line and don't forget to uh, end with the save command okay so uh, now let's have a look to the uh, setup so the machine reboot Okay, press connect and we have a Jero's accelerometers. Okay, so I didn't plug the battery, but we are monitoring a voltage probably from the USB. More important, uh, the port. We have a FlySky receiver connected with iBus, so indirectly a serial protocol based. We have this uh, receiver plug into the UART one where you can see that the serial is turned on for this UART. Okay. So uh, be, don't uh, uh, forget to uh, turn this one if you are flashed the new Betafly version. In terms of configuration, we have a Quad X, no problem. g shot 600 is turned on by default, that's great. No specific board alignment, great. And you can see we have a F4 board and directly 8 kilos. We can probably push even more uh, faster the, uh, the C system. 
Um, okay, RSSI is not directly a measurement because uh, we have a flask guide and unfortunately it don't offer the possibility to uh, collect the RSSI from it. So it's useless. If you have the flask first guy uh, D8 or D16 version, uh, you can uh, and strongly advise to push the RSSI. It's on channel 9. Okay, so let's check the default. We just have the OSD turn on for the fierce guy. Probably we have also the telemetry is not completely sure. We don't have any uh, display LED strip, so it's turned off. So and you can see the CPU load at eight kilos is super low, about five percent. So we have a plenty amount of CPU available. In terms of beeper, we have most of them are uh, turned on. So most of alarm will be a uh, um, uh, ring. I will turn on the expert mode. Okay to check the uh, face safe uh, behavior. It seems that we have a specific uh, uh, channel firebox system here with hold here, so be aware that is on auto and we have a drop, okay, drop uh, system. So um, <clears throat> be aware of that, but it seems that it's turned off the stage two, so it's more associated with, so they manage to configure correctly the face safe. So uh, don't forget to uh, uh, redo the same things if you flash a new uh, beta fly system. Um, in terms of PIDs, what we can find, uh, it's more or less the default one. Well, the YAR P is super high. Uh, maybe it's a default now, Betafly 3.2, but uh, it seems that you have a super uh, high value of proportion, uh, proportional. Uh, the rates are uh, classic, so around 600 to 67 degrees per second. So if you uh, prefer, and personally my choice is to uh, uh, increase a bit, okay, to something more 800 kilos, okay, 800 degrees, sorry. So uh, like this, uh, maybe decrease a bit here, one increase here. Yeah, we have something about 800 degrees. And for the uh, yeah, I prefer something more linear and decrease here to something about 30, um, 33. We have something about a more linear answer. The default uh, angle level strength is 250. So if you are not sure. Um, okay, uh, decrease a little bit this value if you meet some, uh, maybe some vibration, some instabilities. It will reduce uh, the uh, uh, bouncing effect in angle mode with this axis as stabilized, especially in presence of wind. Uh, it could be, you maybe you will need to uh, decrease a bit this value. So uh, we have anti-gravity gain about one, anti-gravity threshold about 350, so probably the default one, okay? And in terms of, um, uh, I will save, okay? And in terms of, um, um, uh, filter settings. Uh, we have uh, the bi quads uh, 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 filter, okay, and uh, okay, and we have the default uh, values of the frequency, central frequency for each uh, passband filter, I guess. Okay, so uh, if you need some uh, meet some oscillation, it will be have to be tuned here. In terms of receiver, I will turn on the receiver, okay. And uh, should, okay, and now as you can see, I've got all the channel correctly, and uh, so no problem. Uh, maybe a little trim is required to uh, center perfectly to 1,500. So I will do it. So you have to long press OK, and then uh, go uh, press down to go to the setup, and then go to the sub trim section. So for channel one, we can press. Okay, until 1500. I will press OK. I will press uh, OK to go to the channel 2. Here I've got to decrease a bit. Okay, press OK to go to the channel 3. Okay. Uh, the channel 3 is sorry, is uh, this throttle. Okay, and so I have to press OK to, pr to go to the fourth channel, which is uh, the yaw. Okay, I will press now and down. Okay, I got something one is not very clear. And to validate, to save, you have to press cancel, long press cancel. You can hear this treble sound, it means that it's safe. Okay, so now it's more or less well uh, uh, centered. So uh, in terms of um, switch, we have the switch uh, B. So the first two-way position on the left will uh, harm the machine. Okay, so be aware. So we would end uh, what we have, we have the switch C, so the first on the right is a three-way position where you can select the flight mode. Okay, so let's go to the mode selection. So as I said, OX1 is the arming section. Okay, 
and the switch C, we are when in upper position we are in angle, okay. When it's in the middle position we are in six axis stabilized, and when it's down we are also in angle, but with uh, air mode turned on. We have the AUX3 assisted with the beeper, but we don't have uh, a seven channel available, at least with this uh, uh, transmitter. Uh, I think the receiver is able to uh, receive up to six channels. So uh, if you definitely need uh, this beeper uh, switch, you will need to uh, flash a new firmware on this FlySky radio to offer up to 10 channels. Okay, it's a complex uh, procedure, but it's possible for our end user. So let's continue to see the um, other uh, settings. Okay, and we have uh, in terms of OSD, so we can see that it has been a little bit tuned compared to the default uh, 3.2. Okay, so some a lot of options have been turned off, but we can see that I will a little bit optimize uh, for the racing. So first, I turn the radio, uh, the camera into pale, so I will force into pale and turn on the metric. That's pretty important. So I will um, remove some import, an important element in my point of view. So the artificial origin, the origin here, okay, I will keep the crossbar. Um, the RSSL value in Fortunity is useless for the FlySky solution, but for the um, um, FearSky you have to. And uh, we have two timers, so the timer one is on time and the other one is the um, uh, fly mode. So they are, uh, uh, they are so impressed one over the other. So I will decrease and be, uh, go down all the information because we are in pale configuration, so we have more free room. And um, I will try to uh, offer the battery voltage something here, okay? And as well of the uh, current flight mode, so in a four corner position, okay? And everything, I will remove the craft name as well because it's useless. And everything sounds to be good. Okay, so I will save. Oh, I will update the uh, camera uh, uh, capacity and the. Um, um, okay, that's all. And uh, we will display the post statistic. Blah 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 blah. Okay, that's great. So I will keep and save. Um, okay, it's done. Yes, per perfect. So. Uh, no other settings to be done, okay? We can probably uh, save and reboot and delete everything. Uh, let's check now uh, the default um, um, BLLE software configuration. So, so we will go to the, uh, uh, we run the software, okay? And uh, probably I will press, need to press connect. And then I will need to power the um, battery, okay? So to boot completely the ASC is done and I will be able to run the read setup and after a couple of seconds <coughs> we will see the uh, current um, ESC. So we have uh, the 16.52, so almost the same. So running this uh, shot 600 um, and we can turn off if you want the break and stop. Okay, and we have the beacon strength is pretty low. So if you want, maybe with the butter increase a bit uh, the uh, ESCs, you can increase a bit these values. It will ring every even strongly and uh, decrease this uh, to two minutes. So you will have a kind of second alarm for such compact model is not completely stupid to things like this. So I will press right side up. And he will write all this information for all the ESC. Okay, and now it's uh, it's time to uh, test the machine with the default settings and maybe uh, if it required to flash new Betafly version and update some PIDs. Welcome to the demo fly of the Mantis 95. So uh, as you saw, uh, it's already more or less out of the box pre-configured. We have the um, uh, flight mode selection here and in central position of the switch C we are in a 6 axis stabilized. When it's up it's in acro and when it's down it's at acro plus air mode. So it's a good choice from my point of view and this switch B here is used to harm. So uh, unfortunately uh, actually the transmitter don't uh, use more than 6 channels so these uh, two uh, other uh, switch cannot be used except to apply maybe a dual rate. Uh, it's good for beginners, so please refer from my other former uh, FlySky uh, 
um, videos associated with some uh, uh, flyers. So um, I will fly first in laws to show you uh, how the punch out in 2S for 70 gram, close to 80 gram. So be sure to avoid any prop contacts when you will attach the GST connector. Also bend downward the uh, uh, 5 gigahertz antenna. Please also uh, uh, point vertically up the um, sorry it was a 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz here. So uh, adjust your angle and let's go for our flights uh, in loss condition. Okay, so I will turn on the recording here. Flashing, perfect. Let's go. So you have to um, use this switch to help. Okay, so you can see the wire, the GST connector is touching. So it's probably a drawback of this machine. Yes, okay. So let's see a punch out. Wow, it's not a monster of power. The buzzer is ringing immediately. So clearly in 2S setup is a little bit uh, weak. So in 6 axis stabilizer it's not a bad flyer. So the battery is ringing. So probably the LiPo is not a real 40C. So let's check another. Uh, is it drifting in 6 axis? It seems not. So at least it's a good news. Ah, a bit. So it starts to drift a bit. So unfortunately, Probably soft mounting will be required, but it's a good flying. Yeah, not so bad. Okay, let's see in macro. So let's see a punch. Wow, it's flipping well, but it's not super most super powerful. Okay, let's continue in acro, but. Mm -hmm. Little bit, little bit um, underpowered. Let's continue in that crew.